All right, so for our third day of class, we have a variety of topics we still need to get to. But the biggest topic is, I need to bring my site back to life from last week. Remember I had said last week that we've got a project that I don't want to start over and over with. I want to um, continue with what I've worked with previously. So we're going to go through that process of resurrecting our site, bringing our site back to life. Um, it's not really a one-click operation, unfortunately. Uh, it'll require a couple steps, but I've written them all down in the handout. It's the same handout from last week, number four, which was the how to archive your site. In that same handout, we've got how to bring it back. So if you don't have a copy of that printed, you can do it later. But let me catch you up to what you need. You want to open computer window. Go to the network location, Classroom Data Z. Scroll down to our class, which is Campus WordPress 1. Open that folder, Campus WordPress 1. And if you don't have a copy of it, you want to drag from my folder e-commerce number four. You want to drag it to your desktop so you can look at it. That's what we're going to do together, those instructions in a moment. And if you have your site from last week, we can continue to use your site from last week with these instructions. If you don't have your site from last week, we will use a copy of my site. And my site is right there, 2016-02-17. So I'm going to drag a copy of instructions number four and the folder February 17th, I'm going to drag it to my desktop. So take a moment to do that. Drag a copy of the handout. If you've got it printed out, you've got it printed out. But if you don't, it's in the folder. And there's my site. So I'm going to copy that to your desktop. I will close the network folder and then I'll proceed. If anyone wants a copy of my files and you're on your own system, I can take your flash drive and I'll give you a copy of my work. All right, so I've got my stuff. Let me look at the handout again. Double click the handout to view it. At Campus eCommerce 4. Let's view that. So at the end of the day last time, we did this first part, archive your site. We'll do it again at the end of the day. Whatever work we end up with at the end of the day, we're also going to archive it so that we can take it with us and not start over. Then comes the second part. We've got archive site, resurrect your site. We need to bring the site back to life. We still need to create a database. <laughs> But then it's going to be slightly different than what we've done before. We're not going to start over with an empty site again. We're going to take this folder that I've just given you and use it to bring the site back. We'll do that together right now. First step, log into phpMyAdmin. Well, that assumes you've got WAMP server running. You can only get to phpMyAdmin when you've got WAMP server running. So, on the desktop, <laughs> Double-click WAMP server. Remember, you will get in the corner a little W that appears. First, it'll be red, then orange, then green. Once you've got that green W, we can proceed. But instruction number one is telling us we need to create a database. We can only create databases once we've got WAMP server running on Windows or MAMP on the Mac. Everyone should see the green W in the corner. Click on it, and from the first item at the top, select localhost. Again, we're going to get back to localhost, the localhost address there. I'll take that over here. So let's click localhost. That'll open your web browser. And whenever I say we go to localhost and that sort of thing, that always means in your web browser, whichever one you like, you go to the web address, localhost. So that should take us to localhost. We should see the web server, the web server welcome screen as we've seen before. I'll take it back now that everyone's got it. 
And so now on WAMP server here, still it says we need to create a database. From this screen here, we're going to click on the bottom left, the PHP My Admin link. That's the one that takes us over to administering databases. Click on PHP My Admin. Notice that I'm not saying all of these steps on the part of the handout because all of these steps are on a previous handout, which we've done before. I think it's handout number one or number two. You, we've done this before. It shouldn't be new. It's on a previous handout. At the top, click Databases. It asks for a database name. We'll simply call it WordPress. And don't forget to click Create. It confirms that I've got a new database, and I see it right there. We've got Information Schema, MySQL, Performance Schema Test, WordPress. If you don't see WordPress, you didn't create it. You might have been clicking and you missed. Make sure you click. So on the handout, that's number one. Log into PHP My Admin, check. Number two, create a database named WordPress, for example, check. Copy your archived site from the previous step into your www folder. All right, let's remind ourselves what, where the www folder is. You're going to open the computer window. This time we'll go to local disk C, C as in cat. We'll open the local disk C. And then we'll open the WAMP folder. That's where the WAMP software is installed. Double-click WAMP. And look at that. Inside of WAMP we've got www. Again, this should not be new. We did it previously a couple of times. Double-click www. And what the handout is saying, put your site that you're bringing back to life into this folder. If you copied my site from last week, I put it on my desktop, you should have put it on your desktop. It's 2016-02-17, and inside of it is some files. What you want to do is copy the whole folder, not the stuff in the folder, the whole folder. That folder from the network, which is my site from last week, I'm going to drag it from my desktop into my window here, the empty area of the WW folder inside of WAMP. So I'm going to copy that over, just drag it over. the handout. Copy your archived site into your WW folder. Check. In your web browser, access the installer PHP file, which is go to localhost slash the name of the folder slash installer.php. Obviously the name of the folder is not January 1st. The name of our folder is 2016-02-17. This handout then you have to think a little bit outside the box that if you type that exactly it will not work and you should understand why it won't. So let's go back to our web browser and let's type the address http colon slash slash localhost slash what's next? 2016 what's next? dash Nope. Dash zero two dash seventeen. Not WordPress because on the first day of class we worked on a project in a folder called WordPress. But our folder now is called 2016 <coughs> Obviously, if you're working with your own copy of it and you named it My Amazing Site then your address better be localhost slash my amazing site. My current site has got this name on the folder, so my address is up here. Slash installer.php. Even though my handout tells you 2016.01.01, it won't work. There is no folder in the WW folder called 2016.01.01.
That's why it should be obvious. Press enter. And if it all is going according to plan, we have the duplicator screen to bring the site back to life. Raise your hand if it didn't work at this point. If it didn't work, make sure you put the right folder into the right folder. Thank you. 
Right now, up on the address bar, let's type localhost slash. So we're going right here. So I'm going to type the, uh, the name of the whole thing. One axis, which is that one right there. Okay, so it's being done. Just two Thank you. 
All right, so let's continue here. Um, again, obviously, I make it look so easy, but I've had 15 years of experience in all of this. And I do have a handout for you that is trying to explain these things, but things always, always come up. It's never so smooth, especially when you're on your own computer. And so uh, the handout that I have is an attempt to try to be as universal as possible. And this, what I'm showing you right now, might seem cumbersome and, and difficult and such, but this, what I'm showing you, is very, very valuable. As you get further into WordPress development, you're going to see if you've got your WordPress site on the real internet, you know, johnsbakery.com, and you make any changes to your site, everyone's going to see the changes you're making, the mistakes you're making as you work on your site, because WordPress works on a live server. What we're doing is working on a development server offline. No one will see this, no one will see your mistakes until we upload it. And therefore, we need a little bit of this setup, which is what we're doing here, and we'll continue to do it every time we come back. We've done it today, right now, where we resurrect the site. Next month, when we've got part two of the <coughs> class, well, again, we're not going to start over. We're going to take what, we've, what we end up with today and continue with it. So we'll do this again next week, and again and again, and hopefully you'll get it by the last day of class when you have to do it without my help. That's a long way away. All right, so my handout, going back to the handout, you will be asked to fill in server path, password, etc. Default server is localhost, which is right there, localhost. Now, I know there's just a couple of little mistakes here, so I'll get you an updated version. I wrote here local shot. Whoops. Local host. <laughs> local host. And also I wrote here... I also here wrote localhost in capital letters. That should have been lowercase as well. Localhost. It is technically different. So what we've got is our host is localhost. What web server, what site, where does my database exist? That's what this is asking us for. It's a, it exists on localhost. Done. What's the login? What's the name and the user to access the database? I have it written right here. It's root with no password blank. Don't write blank. It's nothing. Don't write nothing. On name, it's root. On user, it's nothing. I'm sorry. Name is the name of the database, it says right there. Name is the name of the database. We created a database a moment ago called WordPress. User is the user database name. That's the one that's root. And the password is empty, is nothing. To see if this works, click Test Connection. You should get then a bunch of green successes. Did anyone get any fails? Oftentimes when you get a fail, it means you misspelled something here. If I typed my, my login and such up here, this is going to be possibly a fail. If I misspell it, what if I type WordPress? Oops, fail. Database not found. The database that you create is the name that it's asking you for here. So when you have any failures, that often means you just misspelled something. Worst case scenario, you never created the database. It says, what's the name of your database? You never created it? Of course it's a failure. Or maybe the wrong user or the wrong password. And in this case, no password. I've got success. There's a big warning down at the bottom that this is saying, you're about to bring back to life a website and use a database. Are you sure you want to do that? Because you might accidentally be using the database of your real site, and you're about to put in another site on top of it, and therefore it's going to erase what's already in the database. In our case, we don't have that worry because we've only got one site we're working with. But if we've got multiple sites we're working with, 
in WAMP server or in the real internet, we could accidentally erase one site by placing another one on top of it. That's why there's a huge warning right here, and you have to agree that you've read the warnings and understand them. And again, what I'm telling you is this could, in theory, destroy a previous website of yours. You've only got one site to worry about, so it's not a big deal. Click I've read the warnings, and now you get the button that says Run Deployment. Bring it back to life. So click that. One more time it'll say, are you sure you know what you're doing? Yes, we do. I'm helping you. So we're about to erase a database if there was anything in it. There isn't anything. It's brand new. Click OK. Depending on the complexity of your site. What's that? I'll help you in one moment. According to the speed of your website, your server, the amount of content of your site, this could take a moment or it could take a while. I've seen it taking a couple of seconds like this, and I've seen it take five minutes. You, you don't know until you actually try it, but on this screen then, it's good so far. <coughs> So this is bringing back to life a site that previously existed. Yes. Were you here? Did you just come here? Yes. So you did type in your password and such. Right. Well, let's just uh, let that happen and then we'll, we'll be okay. So, in my line of work, I get clients that sometimes come to my company and say, I'm on Yahoo, I have my website on Yahoo, and I don't like it because it's expensive. Or, I'm on GoDaddy, and I don't like it because it's slow. Or, I'm on Bluehost, and I don't like it because of this. There's always someone complaining. So then, it's time to move their website from one provider to another. This is also the process you would follow. Because your website is made up of hundreds of files, if it's a WordPress site especially. And you can't be safe by simply copying the folder from one server to the other. We have to do something like this where it archives every single file, every single product, every entry in the database, and that's what Duplicator does. It's a plugin that helps you make a perfect copy of your site. For us, we need it because our computer erases every time we come back. But in the real world, why you might want it is, you're working on WAMP server on your laptop, making your site perfect, and now that it's ready, I want to put it on GoDaddy. You're going to follow the same steps. You're going to make a copy of it in Duplicator. You're going to upload it to your GoDaddy server, make a database, run these steps, and now your site is live on the real internet. We'll talk about that also in part two of the class. But this procedure that we're doing is what I would do, what I have done, what we do for real clients. Like if you just want to back up. Yeah, exactly. This is another way to back it up in case you're going to change the design or add new features. You can make a backup of it in case something fails. You bring it back to life the same way. And this is a plugin. It's not built into WordPress. It's not official WordPress software. It's made from another company called Life in the Grid. There's a whole cottage industry of companies creating plugins, which are extra features for WordPress. Some are free, some are paid. We're using the free one, and it's very powerful and very good. They've got a paid version with more features. I'll make you aware of that a little later.
but it is a little technical, isn't it? And especially if you don't have a lot of computer experience, this seems like you're launching the space shuttle. <laughs> but think about it. Pat yourself on the back. You are a server administrator. You created a database. You're working with PHP scripts. Congratulations, you're a server administrator. The site is coming back to life, and notice here. If I was taking it from GoDaddy, it would have an address at GoDaddy. It's moving to my new Bluehost address. It's the same thing. It's localhost, so there's nothing really different. No, actually, there is. The site used to be called WordPress, and now it's got today's date. It's just telling you that's the old address. Here's the new address. If I wanted to change the name of my site, I could here, because we're all using my site, and everyone's Victor's Bakery. If you want to change the name, you can, but not necessary. There's advanced options that you usually don't have to worry about, hopefully. And if you want to create new administrator accounts, you can do so here. This has happened with some clients as well, that they were working with some developer. They fell out with them. <laughs> they didn't want to give up their passwords and such, which happens, unfortunately. And so what we did was we make a copy of the site, we transfer it to a new server, create a new administrator, and lock out the old bad administrators. It's a little advanced, don't worry about it, but just click Run Update. We get this feedback screen. I have no deployment errors, no update errors, no warnings. If you got any warnings or errors, an error is pretty bad. It means something's broken on your site. A warning is just a warning. We can proceed but we'll keep an eye out that our site works properly. I didn't get any of either. <coughs> Sometimes it happens. Hopefully it didn't happen to anyone. No errors, no warnings? No. Nope. Okay, so my handout. Back to the instructions. We've done all of that. Follow the on-screen instructions to begin resurrecting your archived site. After it succeeds, it will recommend a few steps. Follow them, especially removing the archives. And then we'll do step eight. What this is saying is we've brought our site back to life. No errors? Good. Number two, save permalinks. We'll do that in a moment. We've moved from one server to another, technically. We want to make sure our addresses work properly. We'll do that in a moment. Step three would require for you to go to every single page of your site and make sure nothing's broken, <coughs> nothing's missing. <clears throat> that could take a while, uh, but this is to fully ensure your site works. We're going to assume it did, because in my experience it works like 95% of the time. 5% might be too big for you, but 95% of the time that it works without a problem. And step four we will do, which is to do a security cleanup. If I were to take my project that I'm working on here on my own computer and eventually upload it to HostMonster, this method, it's going to leave the installer file and the original zip file still on the server. Conceivably, I could accidentally launch that installer file again a month later. And after me working on my site for a month and adding new products and getting new reviews and new sales, and I accidentally, a month later, access that installer file again, it'll bring my site back to what it was a month ago. Because that's the point of this, to bring your site back to life at the last moment you saved it. So the security cleanup is, we need to delete those temporary files. We don't want to accidentally bring the site back to life from an old archive. And it's a lot of steps to accidentally do, which was the previous <coughs> screens. What could happen is you have a disgruntled employee and knows that you've got this installer file on your server and messes with you by running the installer again and destroying <coughs> your site back to the point it was. So that's why there's an extra step here. Clean that up so that we don't accidentally revert it. Step one is done. I don't have errors. Step two. Click on step two. It will ask you to log into the site. And because we are all using my site, the username is admin and the password is password. If it was your site, of course, you would use your credentials. It's my site, so it's this way. Admin, password with a capital P. And click login. And then it'll say on the top right, welcome admin, and I'll be logged in, and it'll say Victor's Bakery. Did everyone get 
was everyone able to log in? What's that? Cap uh, password is password with a capital P. Lower P, case P shouldn't work because case sensitivity. Huh. Are you using your site or my site? Your site. Do you use lower case P? <laughs> now, what step two is saying is confirm your permalinks, which is the fancy name for your addresses. By default, WordPress is going to create an address that looks like victorsbakery.com slash 125. Victorsbakery slash 1772. It's going to put numbers in your address for the page. Page number 123 is my contact page. Page number 777 is my products page. That's the default of WordPress, which is terrible. Search engines hate that. Search engines don't want your pages to be named with some weird cryptic number. They want your About page to be called About. They want your Products page to be called victorsbakery.com slash products. It wants what is known as a pretty address. And what WordPress gives us by default is an ugly one. It gives us numbers, the numbers in the database. These other ways of saving our addresses are better, such as date and name. It will say the name of the page with the date it was created, that's fine, but the name of the page will appear in the address. That's good. A slightly different way, month and name, that's also good. It'll say the year of the post and the day, and then the title of the item, that's good. Numeric, not good. A gibberish set of numbers to define a page is not good for your SEO. Post name is another good one. It'll take whatever the name of your page is and put it up on the address, obviously, like what you've seen in all the websites you visit. And then there's a custom method. Mine's set to custom method. That's fine for the moment. But the point of this is that if yours is set on default, choose anything else. Mine's already on custom structure, which is good. Just click Save. In my web browser, now I have two tabs. One tab is duplicator, one tab is me where I logged in to the permalink settings. It opened a new window. I'm going to close my permalink setting window so that I'm back on the duplicator window. I've done step one, I've done step two. Step three, as I said, that's the one where you're going to follow every link of your site and check that everything's working. We don't have time for that. If you would really like to test your site, you need to browse every link of your site. There might be a broken link, and sometimes it happens. But this duplicator plugin works really well. So I'm going to assume we did three. We tested our site. Step four, we're going to remove these backup files that are no longer necessary. So click number four. Notice it opens. Uh, it gives you a pop-up. Are you sure you want to delete it? Click OK. And it opens a new window. We've got the duplicator window, the tools window. <coughs> That's what my instruction here is saying. After it succeeds, it will recommend a few steps follow them, especially removing the archives, which we just did. So these, these buttons here, we clicked on it, data cleanup, delete reserved files. Go ahead and click the first one. It says we remove this file, There's there goes the installer, the backup file, the data, the, here's your whole database right here, everything about your database, the installer logs and so forth. If you're working with duplicator version you know, 1 and we've got version 2, we can delete the old data. But the only thing we need to do here is to make sure we've cleaned click delete reserve files. You only need to do it once. If you try it again, it'll you know it's nothing different, but close your duplicator window. I'm done with the duplicator. We only had four steps. 
I'm done with duplicator and let's stay inside the tools window. It's still telling me it's recommended to remove your archive file from the roots of your WordPress install. This needs to be done manually. For some reason, they deactivated the ability for that to be done automatically for me. When I taught this class a few months ago, the duplicator plugin, when you clicked this delete reserved, it will also delete your zip file, which is going to complain later that it still exists. So I don't know why they removed that. Now we have to do it manually. We need to remove that backup file that is no longer necessary. That's the next step on my handout. Return to the WW folder and delete the remaining zip file. What that's saying is I need to go back to computer window, C drive, local disk C, WAMP, www, my current site, which is 2016-07-17, double click that one, and inside of there I still have the zip file. That's still a copy of my site, which I no longer need. I've got my site back to life. So once you see that zip file, click the icon and then on the keyboard, delete it. Press delete on the keyboard and then say, yes, I'm trying to delete it. There we go. So now we've deleted those backup files. We've brought the site back to life. I mean, I'm logged into it in the dashboard. And I'm ready to go. Yes? Could you do that again? Uh, <coughs> open computer. Mm -hmm. C drive. Right. WAMP. WAMP folder. WAMP. Inside of WAMP, we've got www. We've got our project. Double click the today's project file. And inside of there, I already deleted it, but there's a zip file there. There's a little folder with a zipper. Click it and then delete it. So we've done that. We're, we want to log in, which just means go back to your go back to your site, test any site. We're done. I'm going to close that in that handout. And on my web browser, I mentioned it before. It's in one of the handouts, but you should have a note: HTTP colon slash s localhost my site, whatever your site is called, slash wp dash admin. Whatever it's called, at the end, wp-admin is the way to get back to the admin screen, this dashboard, always. Every WordPress site has this structure, whatever it's called. John's amazing pizza.org slash wp-admin. pmdinteractive.com slash wp-admin. Every WordPress site has that little login screen. If every single one of them has it, that's inviting the hackers to try to hack my site. Because I could go to whitehouse.gov slash wpadmin if it's a WordPress site. And it might be there for me to log into <coughs> it. And next month, when we get a little more advanced, we'll talk about what if we called it whitehouse.gov slash secret entrance slash wpadmin. We can do that so that our WP admin screen is not simply an obvious link like that. We can put it in its own obfuscated directory like that. No one's going to be able to guess that. And that's where my login screen is at. That makes my site more secure. So we have to talk about this security stuff. That'll be next month because, again, we're going to have an e commerce site. We're going to be processing sales and such. We're not going to uh, actually store people's credit card info, but we will be storing, if you choose, their address and their phone number and such. And so all the security that we can accomplish is a very good thing. And I'll talk <coughs> about that. Yes? Um, you said we're going to be storing your credit card info. I understand. Why don't you have to employ an e-commerce server mm -hmm. to store the credit card information for you? Yes, and what we're going to do is we're going to use PayPal. 
we can use PayPal with their top-notch security and servers, and they're the ones that are going to process and store the data. Okay, but you don't need PayPal, but you don't want to accept credit card, you want to employ an e-commerce security company server. Yeah. What is, do, you, what, do you know about the charges for those and how you set them up? Uh, yes and no. Uh, usually for most of my clients, we are dealing with one of the big boys. Usually with our clients, we deal with PayPal or Authorize.net. We deal with those companies that are designed for that. Okay. Because for us to do it ourselves, suddenly there's more liability. I just want to know how you would connect to it. I mean, I have a company set up putting up. I don't want, obviously, credit card number at all. We will talk about setting up PayPal. We will talk about setting up those external processors for us because I don't want to store that data. And so we'll talk about security such as changing the address of your site and such. But at this point, hopefully what I've got is that my site is back to life to remind you what it looked like. Let's hover over the name of the site, back to visit site. And that was my site as I left it. I've got this design home button about us, contact, buy now, that goes over to Amazon, we've got a blog, so we've got the site back to life as if the way I left it on the, on the last moment of the last class. Again, this is the duplicator plugin. What we're going to do is we'll go back to the dashboard, um, we'll take our first break, and when we come back, we will uh, work with other aspects of WordPress. We still need to learn about widgets and other, other things like that, and more about plugins. So it's 1.30 uh, or so. Let's take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 1.40, and then we'll proceed. I'll turn the printer back on if you want the handout, and then we'll go on.